Um, <clears throat> this past week, uh, Jackie and I were at the Trewergi Junior School Nativity for the years five and six. And they sung a number of songs, all based around the nativity. Good, beautiful songs they were. And it was such a, a joy, particularly for us, of course, because our eldest granddaughter, Jess, was in the choir. But it was such a joy to hear 300 children singing at the tops of their voices. These lyrics, among others. God with us, God with us, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, King of Kings. But it was, I, was, I had mixed emotions as that was happening because it was a great joy to me to hear maybe 300 children proclaiming that truth and to see 500 parents, grandparents and other relatives listening to that truth. What a blessing. The truth of the gospel being proclaimed so simply. So easily, not just with that song, but with all of the songs that they sung. It, it was, it, they were good songs, accurate to scripture, the scriptural record. And in our society that we live in, the fact that that can be publicly proclaimed was fantastic. And for 800 people to hear that and take part in that. But it grieved me. This is where the mixed blessing was. It grieved me. How many of those 800 people had any idea of what they were singing, of the words that were being proclaimed in that, um, that auditorium at the Regal Cinema. The truth that God is with us. So let's read those verses. Um, we're looking at Matthew, as you'll see from your bulletin, we're looking at Matthew chapter 1. One of the things that, um, that I, was, I was sharing downstairs as we had the, um, the powerhouse time of prayer before the service, one of the things that's deeply concerned me this this Christmas is that these carols that we sing they're so familiar to us aren't they the verses of scripture that we roll out to put on display for for Christmas as it were they're familiar to us they're so familiar to us and there's the danger that we can become oh well it's Christmas time we're going to read those same passages of scripture again my, my heart's desire, my longing is the Holy Spirit might ignite those scriptures, bring them to life again for us. That it might not just be, oh, we're going to have the Emmanuel reading again, but that it might be real for us today and might mean something. So let's read from verse 18 of chapter 1 of Matthew. This is what God's word says. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus or Yeshua in the Hebrew. For he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which is translated, God with us. That's where we were in Isaiah 7 at the beginning of the service. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you, we thank you for your word that by the power of the Holy Spirit, your word speaks to us today. So I pray, would, would I get out of the way? Would anybody else that might be clouding our thoughts and our thinking at this time, would it all be eclipsed so that we only see Jesus? So that we only see that beautiful Emmanuel, God with us. Speak, we pray. May our hearts be ready to receive your word, O oh God, through Jesus' name. 
Amen. <clears throat> this morning, as you'll gather already, the focus um, that I want to draw our attention to before the children come back upstairs. The, the children, by the way, are going to come upstairs with their Chris Tingles, and we'll sing the Chris Tingles song right at the end, um, part of the tradition that we have here in this church. But the focus for the next few minutes for ourselves is this last part of verse 23, this name, Emmanuel, which means, which is translated, God is with us. You sometimes see on the back window of cars, don't you? A dog is for life, not just for Christmas. I'm having to learn that all over again. Our focus verse this morning is the same principle. This verse is for life, not just for Christmas. The truth, the reality that our God is with us. It's a wonderful thing to proclaim at Christmas time. It's a wonderful truth to embrace that through the incarnation, God himself became a man. So this, this glory, this wonder, this miracle, I'm referring to it as, of God with us, should be with us every single day. Not just when we come to a Christmas service. Not just when we approach Christmas time. But the truth of it needs to remain with us right through the year. I wonder if we might just pause for a moment and reflect on the glory of this magnificent truth that the creator became a creature this truth that the almighty became a helpless babe that the all-powerful god experienced the weakness of humanity that the self-existent one learned to be dependent on others. That the infinite God, the magnificent infinite God that you cannot contain, took on our frail and limited human flesh. That the omnipresent God, the God who is everywhere present, experienced the limitation of space. Remember the, the words of, of, of um, Wesley, Charles Wesley? Our God contracted to a span. Think of the holy, separate God being placed in a dirty animal feeding trough. Think of the fact that there was the omniscient, the all-knowing God who through the humanity of Jesus learned obedience. Hebrews tells us that Jesus learned obedience. The truth that the sovereign God subjected himself to Mary and Joseph. That account of when he was found in the temple at 12 years old, it says he returned with his parents and was subject to them. What contrasts as we consider the glory, the majesty, the might, the, 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 something of the, of the names and the character and, the, and, and who God is. And we, we think of all that in vast terms that our minds cannot comprehend. But yet that God came into these very circumstances, these weak human circumstances that we experience day by day. That is the essence of God with us. He attached himself, as it were, to the weakness and feebleness of our human frame. He experienced what it was to have pain. God came and joined himself to our frail and broken humanity. This is the true miracle of Emmanuel, God with us. But, you know, it wasn't that God said, let's be like them. It's not that God said, I want to be their friends. Let's, let's, let's come down to them and be like them and, and be with them. Ultimately, the purpose of God in this, in the incarnation, in the fact that God became flesh, in the fact that God was with us, the whole purpose is that Jesus could live that life that we couldn't live, that life of absolute perfection. You and I may, you and I may try it. 
Some may come much closer than I do, but we cannot live that perfect life. Christ himself has demonstrated it for us. And because he lived that perfect life, he was an acceptable sacrifice to God. When he gave up his life, when, he's, when his body was broken for us, as we've remembered in the breaking of bread, when his precious blood was shed to save us, this was the plan. But also part of the miracle of Emmanuel meant that he felt our pain. He experienced our sorrows, as Isaiah 53 tells us. He took part in our sufferings. He shared with our weaknesses. And this is where we need to remember that verse 23. The second half of verse 23 is not just for Christmas. It's for life. That Jesus has shared all our sufferings. We were talking in the, I can't remember whether it was the men's breakfast or the wildfire men's group on Thursday night. We were talking about the, the temptations of Jesus. There is not a single temptation that you or I can face that Jesus has not already faced it. And I don't care what your temptation might be, what your particular issue is. Jesus has faced it. But he faced it different to us because he was sin apart. He was without sin. The three that we have recorded when he went into the wilderness are just three of them that were recorded. It says, it says in, that, in that section that he was tempted in all things. Not just some of the things to give us an example. Not just the bad things. In all things, Jesus was tempted. And so we have one in him who's experienced anything that we might go through today on this earth. <clears throat> so he understands our circumstances like no one else ever could. All because God became a man. Yet in becoming a man, he did not lose anything of who he was by what he became. <clears throat> it's not that he was it's not that he was God and then he changed and became a man that would be a completely different concept that would be God for us but what we have in this scripture what uh, what uh, what is presented here for us in verse 23 is God with us how was he with us in the person of Jesus Christ God was right there with us in our circumstances <clears throat> This name, Emmanuel, God with us, means that even though he took on the weakness of humanity, he was still God. And therefore, he's a right object of our wonder and our worship today. It's right that we worship Jesus because he is God with us. <clears throat> It's wonderful when our hearts are drawn out to worship him. As we consider this miracle of God with us, we can't help but proclaim his worthiness. <coughs> but beyond that declaration of praise and worship in the moment, as we come together as church on a, on a Sunday morning, for example, beyond that declaration of praise, what does this truth of God with us really mean to us? How does it impact your life? John Wesley is reported to have said on his deathbed, the best of all is this, God is with us. A dying man you think of all the, all the achievements that he, had, that he had accomplished. All the achievements as a man of God, as a, as a mighty man of God that he was, that he had accomplished for the glory of God. And he says right at the end of the life, the best of it is just this. God is with us. The best of it is not that I've established a new denominational church, not that I've saved Thousands upon thousands of people across the country. The best of it is this, that God himself is with us. <clears throat> As he could look back over his life 
the best thing was to experience this great truth. But what about you and I? Can we say that? Can we say that? And look, can I say and look back over my life and say, well, the best of it is God with us. God is with us. Maybe you're not yet a Christian. Maybe you've heard this message so many times. But you've not yet given your life to Jesus. You've not yet surrendered to him. You've not yet asked him to forgive you for the things that you've done wrong. My appeal to you today, don't go a moment longer without Jesus. <clears throat> know what it is to have him in your life, to experience a clear conscience, to, to have no guilt before a holy, righteous God. To know that everything that you've done wrong, he has dealt with it. To know God's love and the peace of God just flooding through your heart. To experience Emmanuel, God with us. Now I know there's, there's many people in this room that have experienced that. But for some of us, it's so far in the distant past. That are we still living in the joy of it? The joy of that miracle that God has decided to come and take up his residence in me by the power of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> and as I say, my appeal to you today, if you've not yet reached that point, that moment, I long that you might know Jesus. I'm not going to make an altar call at this moment or ask you to come out to the front and kneel and pray and so on. But right where you are in your seat, speak to God in your heart. Invite him to come into your life. Ask him to forgive you for the things that you've done wrong. He will forgive you immediately. And you will know the love of God and the peace of God flooding into your heart. <clears throat> but as I've kept saying this morning, this truth is not just for Christmas or for this moment. This truth is not just for today or for this service. This truth is for life. You can go on proving and experiencing that the almighty God of the universe is with us. Whatever we might face. Whatever. As I mentioned earlier, Jesus was tempted in every single temptation. So there's nothing that you might face tomorrow morning. There's no issue that you might face tomorrow that Jesus hasn't already faced it. Praise his name. So for all of us here, what about tomorrow morning? <clears throat> when we may receive a devastating medical diagnosis, remember this truth. Emmanuel, God is with us. And know that because he has saved you, because he will walk through all of your trauma, whatever it might be, we can rise above the storm. We can rise above the flood and experience something of who God is in the very desperate circumstances that I might be passing through. As is the issue at the moment. Maybe on Tuesday you can't pay the electric bill. Or the rent and you're facing eviction. <coughs> Hold on to this truth and prove the experience that God is with us. Speaking to somebody just, th just this week. Giving testimony of their faith and dependence on God. When they could have taken a loan they waited. And in the last moment God came in and provided. Hold on to this truth. God is with us, Emmanuel. And as you hold on to this truth, see his hand at work in your life. Bringing about a miraculous provision. We've experienced it many times in our life. <clears throat> I remember there was one time when we were back at Red Ruth Baptist Church. And we didn't have enough money for the rest of food that week. We didn't know what we were going to do or where we were going to, to, to go. And Jackie was given, a, a, somebody shared a word with her about an empty milk bottle on the doorstep. And we thought, well, we haven't got any empty milk bottles. We've got an empty jam jar. And in faith, we put that on the doorstep. 
Neighbours must have thought we were mad, but that's not a problem. That's nothing new. The next day, um, Jackie and I arrived home at the same time. She came in the front of the house, I came in the back, just in the same moment. And we came through to the living room, <clears throat> and there on the floor was an envelope with hundreds of pounds worth of vouchers. Our God provided. Because God was with us. Now, I don't say that to bring any, any attention or, or, or anything to ourselves, because I know that in this room that some of you can give those same sort of testimonies about the provision of our God. And it's not that we twist his arm and that we tempt him and that we say, God's going to do this because I want him to provide my new Xbox or whatever it's going to be. But my God will provide because of this great truth, God with us, Emmanuel. Because of the fact that Christ came, because of the fact that Christ lived the life that we couldn't live, because he has dwelt among us, and he still does today by the power of the Holy Spirit in me, we can prove day by day by day the truth of God with us, Emmanuel. And my heart, my longing is that every single one of you in this room and all those listening on Zoom and so on, that every single one of us might prove this, might experience this truth, that God is with me. Not just 2,000 years ago when he was born in, a, in an animal feeding trough, but he is with me today in the circumstances that I face and that I go through. Maybe you're being bullied at school or college or, or whatever it is. Maybe you're different from the rest and you're, and you're mocked because of it. Remember this truth that God is with you. Because Jesus came. And that he will give you the strength to carry on. And that he'll be with you as you are still and know that he is God. Here, today. Today. Tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, as you go through the week. To know and prove and experience, no matter what you face, that our God does not change. And that because of this great truth that we're focusing on and concentrating on here, because of this great truth, Emmanuel, God with us, we can experience that day by day as we go through life. <clears throat> You know, this is not an abstract truth or doctrine. This is not something like a picture on the wall for you to look at and admire. This is not a doctrine or a dogma that you might read out of a book. This is the truth of your life. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants for you today, to live this life of Christ in me, the hope of glory. That is God with us. This great truth. We shouldn't just... Pull it out of a drawer at Christmas time and dust it off and think, there, we're going to talk about Emmanuel, God with us. What about New Year's Day? What about the end of January when the weather's awful? And you're feeling depressed and you don't know how you're going to get through to the summer or how you're going to face this obstacle or that obstacle. That's when the truth of God with us comes into its own. Not just... For an Advent service or a carol service. And as we study his word day by day. Not just read a few verses and then pass on. But read God's word and study God's word day by day. So we will prove and experience God with us. Good days, bad days, it does not matter. You will experience that he is with you. And this is what it means to walk with Jesus as one of his disciples. To prove and experience the miracle of God with us. We're going to close this song in a moment. We're going to sing a couple of uh, this, close this song, close this service in a, in a couple of moments. And we're going to sing a couple of songs. The first, a great worship song where we invite God to hide us under his wings. Where we invite God to take control in the circumstances, in the difficulties, in the trouble, whatever it may be. We recognise the immutability of God. The fact that he is from, from eternity to eternity, to eternity and nothing can change him in the process. The fact that our God is solid, is secure. 
And therefore we can, in those difficult circumstances, when the flood rises, when the storm comes, we can hide in him. And then we're going to sing that great um, Wesleyan carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, because verse 2 speaks of, says this, it says, Veiled in flesh the Godhead see. Hail the incarnate deity, pleased as man with man to dwell. Jesus, our Emmanuel. And this is an opportunity for you to respond worshipfully to God. The children are going to come up while we sing the songs and then we're going to do the Chris Dingle part afterwards. But I don't want you to leave this place today without doing business with God. If you want to know this, if you want to experience this, prove this for yourself. A daily dose of Emmanuel. A daily experience of God with us. Whether it be dealing with the miraculous in your life that you might need right now. Whether it be dealing with, the, with, with just occupying your mind, your heart, your vision with the perfection of who Jesus is. We want to pray with you. And so we invite you at the end of the service, come and find me out. Um, and I'd love to pray with you that you might almost, it's, it's almost about, it's not making a vow. I'm not suggesting we make a vow. But you need to stand and make a declaration. If God is speaking to you and wants to, and wants to spend more time with you, as, as it were, to, for you to experience God with us, the Emmanuel, then then. Do some business with God. Don't just walk out the door and say, oh, I'll, I'll think about that during the week. Come to God. We'll pray with you and for you so that you might know and experience the truth, the reality of Emmanuel, God with us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this great miracle that the almighty God of the universe, who dwells in unapproachable light, came so close to us in the person of our dear Saviour Jesus. Born in a manger approximately 2,000 years ago. Experienced the hardship of humanity. Experienced difficulty and strife but yet was without sin and lived that perfect life to your honour and glory, O oh God. We pray, may we learn more of what it is to live with Jesus, to walk with Jesus, to experience in every day of our lives the truth of Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for that amazing work that he did on the cross that bought our freedom. We thank you, God, that we have the liberty to come, to approach you, to be in your presence because of Emmanuel. So as we sing these, these songs, would, would our hearts just respond in true worship, in true adoration for all that he has done in coming close to us in the person of Jesus. Help us in this, we pray. In his precious name. Amen.